So number four, snake dreams. So a snake is an animal and animal is the form. And the function of animals, there are there are a lower life form. And so I don't want to get into a whole thing of uh, um, like the evolution of, of consciousness through elements and gases and everything, but animals are a lower life form. Uh, well, so so you okay? I guess so. You have gases are are um, the, one of the lowest life forms. Gases. It do, it's, doesn't really have any physicality to it in this physical greedy reality. And then you have minerals, which um, have form, but they have no motion. And then you have plants. Plants have motion; they can move a little, but they don't really have mobility. So they can feel things, they can feel emotions, but they don't really have the ability to move around. You know, animals are, are have the ability to move around and they have motion and they have physicality like those previous three. However, they lack imagination. They have no imagination. So they're very habitual because it's hard for them to imagine something new and create something new for themselves. So animals are very habitual. Well, then you have, uh, you know, humans. Humans have imagination, so we have the power to create things. So we are creative beings. So we're of a higher life form, and then we are also moving into you know more spiritual, intuitive beings. Not necessarily like you know we're going to evaporate into spirits and just be wispy beings, <laughs> but we are becoming more powerful and in adding intuition. As you know, like like daydreaming is just a very easy thing; anybody can do it, but not anybody can just perceive intuitively you know, intuitive thoughts on a whim, you know, so we are moving into a, a state of humanity, you know, through the next hundreds of years to where intuitive thoughts and being intuitive is going to be just as natural as daydreaming. But anyways, that's the next life, higher life form. But anyways, I'm saying all that just to help you understand the function portion of this form and function, you know, animals are habitual creatures. So how is the mind habitual? Well, the, the habitual thoughts that you have, you know, meaning, you know, because a habit is something you just do without thinking of it. You know, you, somebody says, bless you, you have a habit, or somebody sneezes, you have a habit of saying, bless you. You know, you don't, you don't think about it. You just say it, you know, if um, you have a habit of, you know, brushing your teeth, you know, habits are things you just don't think of, you just do them. Well, we also have habitual ways that we use our mind, you know, um, like I used to have a strong habit. It still comes up every once in a while, but not really so much anymore. I used to have a ha whenever I'm driving down the road, I would have a habit of just like my mind would just imagine the most wild shit of just like, you know, driving off a cliff or, you know, driving into the onside traffic or, you know, if semi flipped over and my mind would just imagine like, oh, if these, you know, it was more like if these scenarios happen, what would I do kind of thing? Um, but uh, slowly, as I, you know, some people, other people, a lot of other people experience that. So I'll just share what I what I did with it. I would just take that image and use my imagination to burn it up in fire, which will purify the energy. And then I imagine myself wherever I'm going. I imagine, I imagine myself pulling in, very calm, very stress free, very happy to be there, and pulling in and in, in, in a very timely fashion. You know. Also, I had also had a <laughs> same thing along the same lines. I'll be, and this still does this, this this is the way it still does happen uh on uh, in in an often way not not very often but every once in a while where i'll imagine cop pulling me over you know being pulled being pulled over is a very real thing that happens to a lot of people when they're driving and so i'll do the exact same thing okay let me burn this image up you know because i'll because i like I'll, I'll get into like going through whole scenarios of you know, okay, um, I need to make sure that when they come up to the window, I let them know, you know, I have a concealed carry permit. This is where my pistol is, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, wait a second, why am I getting it? Why am I imagining and manifesting this whole, <laughs> you know, conversation to where I'm just going to attract to myself this experience? No, let me burn this up. And then let me take that energy that I just purified and let me imagine myself wherever I'm going, pulling in just fine. I'm happy. I'm at peace. I'm there on time, and 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 then I and then I go on my day. But that's a very habitual thought. So I'm explaining all of that just to help you to be able to identify your own habitual thoughts 
yeah, what kind of thoughts just habitually come into the back of my mind? You know, another one I used to have is, is I need more money. You know, I didn't consciously just think I need more money. I would, I would get a bill. I need more money. You know, uh, a lot of times when this was going on, you know, run out, run out of minutes. <laughs> you know, a lot of us can understand that. Oh man, I ran out of minutes. I need some more money. I need, I need to get some more minutes on my phone. You know, um, even when I got paid, <laughs> this ain't enough. I need more money. <laughs> it's a very habitual thought. You know, I got to go to the grocery store. You know, I got a long list of groceries. I got, I got, I got money. I got a long list of groceries. I'm about to, I'm about to stock up. You know, I'm about to spend three hundred dollars on these groceries. But all other, you know, I'm only getting less than one percent of what's in the store. You know, so it's like in, in the back of my mind, I have this habitual thought of I need more money on all the things that aren't on my list as I'm passing them up. If there's anything on, on my list that I want and I'm passing up, I need more money for that because I need these things. You know, so it was a very habitual thought for me. So explaining kind of those two examples to help you to identify your own habitual thoughts. But snakes, a lot, there's a few animals that have specific um, interpretations. So let me backtrack a second. You know, as, as a person who interprets dreams, I can really only share and, and translate the language that the dream is in. That's really all I'm doing. I'm translating. Interpreting really comes from the dreamer because they're the only ones who knows their mind. They're the only ones who really know their thoughts and emotions throughout the day. And they're the only ones who can really identify what this whole translation, what this whole meaning of the dream really applies to, what it really means. You know, I have people all the time, oh my God, that makes so much sense. You know, only they can make sense of it. Because for me, I'm like, I have no idea. You know, like when I first started interpreting dreams, you know, I'd be like, well, uh, it seems like this dream is saying this. Like I have no clue. And they'll be like, oh, my God, this is exactly what's happening. Oh, OK, great. You know, now I'm just it's just, yeah, this is what your dream means. Yeah. Got thousands of experiences back in that feeling of. But um, animals, certain animals represent certain things. And so other than those certain animals, any animal, you have to identify that. And to help you to identify that, you would just look at how you view that animal. So like, for instance, a lot of people with dogs, a lot of times it's, it's loyalty. Um, for cats, the majority of people are going to see that as like independence. Um, turtles, you know, slow or protective. That's kind of switches. So yes, it is universal. Of uh, It's habitual thought, but there is kind of your own perspective on that. Just like with people, you know, I'm going to see Jill one way. Tom's going to see Jill another way. And Susan's going to see Jill a third way. You know, Jill's still a person. So she still represents a, a characteristic of our own personality. But how we view her is going to determine what that characteristic is. So you really have to look at, you know, what, how you view that animal. And that'll give you more insight into that habitual thought that it's speaking on. Now, snakes represent um, creative energy because snakes uh, for, for thousands of years have represented the kundalini. Um, I put a video on this on TikTok the other day on snakes and the kundalini and things. Uh, but, you know, one thing that you can see that's regularly still in America because America is really the only, only culture that sees snakes in a negative way. But um, snakes will represent creative energy because the Kundalini is your divine healing power. And so in, um, in the universal language of, or uh, in our culture in America, hospitals have uh, the Kundalini symbol. Wait, we all know the, like the staff with the snake around it. Well, some places have one staff with a snake around it. That's more kind of they're trying to um, just be a little more uh, hidden with it and go along the like storyline of Moses. Um, but the true depiction is the staff with the two snakes around it, the Ida and Pingala, the, the Kundalini energy within your spine. The staff is your spine. You have the Kundalini energy, Ida and Pingala. It's two strands swirling around, interconnecting at your chakras. And then the wings at the top, which represent the the freedom that you will find once you activate this kundalini, you know? And so um, we, all, we all, I'm certain, can think of and, and pull to mind from our memory that image. Well, part of the reason that they put that on, on ambulances and hospitals is because, you know, it's, it's our, heal, it's our mo most powerful healing energy. It's our most powerful creative energy. But it's a very healing energy because it, it can create healing, you know, if you understand the mechanics of it and how to use it. But, um, but that's what, you know, you create the healing. So that's why it's still creative energy. You're creating the healing. But ambulances and things, they put that on there 
because you know we all understand hospitals for the most part and doctors and in, in America, the healthcare system is pretty much designed to create customers, you know, create uh, patients, to create customers, to generate money. <laughs> you own a hospital, you are a millionaire by default, multimillionaire by default. But um, part, of, part of the things that will alleviate their karma for doing that is to also let you know, you know, you can heal this shit yourself. <laughs> we're we're going to ride you in an ambulance marked with the symbols of the kundalini meaning you have the power within you to create your own healing on this <laughs> um if you only knew how to do it but anyways snakes are habitual use of the creative energy a lot of us a lot of a lot of snake dreams come through of like being afraid of snakes or snakes biting the people or lots of snakes and so that's really going to come through as um being afraid of your own creative power so like earlier, I talked about, you know, the example of the person who got fired, you know, they got fired and they were, you know, they realized, you know, I realized, oh, wow, I, I kind of manifested this myself by, you know, not really wanting to be at this job, being tired of this job and talking down and it's frustrating me. And I kind of unconsciously created and manifested me no longer being there because I didn't want to be there. Wow. My creative power really bit me in the ass, <laughs> you know, so oh, this snake bit me. You know, so you can really see um, how that dream, how that interpretation would, you know, somebody would like, like if that person came to me and said, I have a dream about a snake. And, you know, I just, I don't know, you know, a friend of mine told me to come to you, I have a dream about a snake. Oh, okay. It means, you know, you're kind of afraid of your own creative power. You created something in your life and kind of bit you in the ass. Oh, yeah. I got myself fired. <laughs> but anyways, that's kind of uh, what snake dreams, what, what it would mean. And so if, if you had a dream like this, what I would do, because um, like I said, you know, applying the message is the most important thing. What I would do if I had a dream like this is look at the circumstances in my life that I don't like, like that, that I don't want to be there, and then assess like how have I created this for myself? You know, how has my creative power kind of bit me in the ass? How am I afraid? of how I'm, you know, because I'm unconsciously creating this, that kind of scares me, you know, like a lot of times I'll, I'll, if I say things like, you know, you have the power to create your own healing or you, your thoughts create your reality. You mean I manifested this to happen to me? You know, you mean I manifested this illness on myself? Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I'll kind of like back up, but really ultimately, yes. I mean, it was probably unconscious, you know, nobody's really out here consciously hurting themselves, torturing themselves. They have other that they're working on but um you know through that 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 power that unconscious power kind of scares them you know that's kind of scary to grasp but if you do grasp it then you know one there's a level of responsibility but then on the back end of that there is a level of freedom because if you've if i've created this then i can definitely create the healing <laughs> you know so that's what i would do uh if, if I had a dream like this, where I was kind of scared of snakes, is look at how I've kind of made, how have I unconsciously caused this to happen? Okay, that insight will help me to understand and identify how I can then consciously manifest what I do want. <laughs>